2024 is here. Buyers, sellers, realtors, and lenders are ready for a rebound, ready for a lower rate, higher volume year, but it's nowhere to be found. What gives? Let's find out. Ready, set, stall. Man, we're all ready for a better year. I mean, 2023 was brutal in the housing industry, but here we are in mid-February, and it's not here yet. Here's the good news, team. Better days are ahead. They are coming, but they're just not here yet. But why? Well, first, a quick look back. The mini rally started October 20th, and it's been fairly good ever since, seeing small rate improvements day after day, really peaking around Christmas time. And then we see this retreat as of late, rates worsening since the start of 2024, sitting as we speak on a very important technical line of support, the 200 day moving average. But Ryan, why the stall? Why the reversal of fortune? Everyone's ready to go. Buyers, sellers, everyone's ready to go. We just need rates to cooperate. I agree, but the short answer is simply this, inflation. The enemy of low interest rates is still not tamed. Report after report coming in day after day showing us all that the Fed's work to tame inflation may not be done. The concerning part to me is not this recent negative run that we've had, but what it will force the Feds to do in return. As we speak, the odds of a rate cut in May are dropping and now are only 30%. We've quickly gone from a common belief of six to seven rate cuts in 2024 to we're not even sure if we'll see one in June. The prediction that no one wants to see or even say aloud is we may not see any rate cuts. These inflation reports don't start to turn in our favor. This could easily keep rates where they are or even worse. Now, thankfully there's a small chance that won't happen, but the odds of cuts happening in the near future are dwindling with every hot inflation report that comes out. Let's dig in starting with Friday. Red is bad. Green is good for rates on this chart. Well, Friday, a red day, PPI comes in hot. Wholesale prices post biggest increase in five months. Inflation fight, not over. Another really bad day here on February 13th, CPI rose 3.1%. For those rooting along at home, we want the opposite. We want deflationary news. We're rooting for the exact opposite of what we saw on that day. Wall Street Journal affirming what we said earlier. The stock market tanked that day. They we're not happy with the news either. As a result, stock market sold off and interest rates rose. The start of February 2nd and 5th, respectively. Second, 353,000 jobs were created, almost double what was expected with positive revisions to previous reports, I might add. Now, February 5th, Powell was interviewed on 60 Minutes. He reiterated that there will be no early interest rate cut. Thanks so much for that, bud. January 16th, a bad red day again for rates. CPI and shelter costs rose. Fed President Bostic states inflation must be tamed and must get back to 2% before cutting rates. Ah, heading the other way, folks. If we haven't done so already, let me hammer this point home with some more data and we'll go rapid fire here. Housing wire, US inflation hotter than expected. Logan now only predicting three rate cuts this year. Basis point, core inflation 1993 to 2024 shows why the Fed won't cut rates yet. With the cool chart showing inflation way above 1993 and 2020 levels. Over to calculated risk, year over year inflation reading showing services still rising with a deep dive into all of this. Zooming over to Redfin as they distill this all down for the buyer, showing us a graph that no one wants to see. Home buyer housing payments still on the rise, 9.1% year over year, a brutal trend that will only reverse when inflation is tame and interest rates come down. Team, don't kill the messenger today. There's a saying that I love to use that states facts don't have feelings. This is all just data and facts, but I don't know about you. They're making me feel a certain type of way right about now. I'm breaking my own rule here, but I'm ready for that pain train to stop so I can jump right off. One thing to watch though, that may have a positive impact on interest rates is the regional banking concerns. He's rooting for banks to fail or merge, but if that happens, this would impact rates in a positive way. Team, we worked really, really hard today to explain what has happened over the past month and a half, leveraging countless sources to explain this in the simplest of terms. We hope that makes sense now. And moreover, we really hope that you appreciate it. If you do, all we ask is that you go share it with a thousand people. Kidding, I mean, kind of, you can actually do that very quickly by sharing this on social with one little click of a button. Guys, we would greatly appreciate that. It means the world to us to see our work shared and the pictures of entire teams watching the show at their team meetings. Keep it coming, we love it. Hang in there, it will get better, maybe just not as soon as you thought. And now you all know the why when a buyer or seller or coworker asks why the feds are cutting rates. See you guys next week.